Right now, you have time to apply to be an astronaut candidate. The deadline is April 16th, and here's what you actually need to be eligible. I found this confusing because it's advertised even on a bunch of news headlines as being open to the public, but it's really not. Some of the strict requirements are you must have completed or be currently enrolled in a test pilot school program nationally or internationally recognized and will have completed this program by June 2025. Or you have the option of completing a master's degree or foreign equivalent in an accredited college or university with major study in an appropriate technical field of engineering, biological science, physical science, computer science, or mathematics. There's even more requirements and we're going to get into them in this video but part of the reason I wanted to make this is because I've had a lot of you send me this application and say I thought of you Ellie this is your time to be an astronaut and it's absolutely not I don't have any of these requirements and these would take years to complete however if you do have these requirements the salary is posted online you're looking at making a little over a hundred and fifty two thousand dollars a year now this selection process is estimated estimated to take approximately one year to complete. NASA anticipates announcing a new class of astronauts in summer of 2025. And just recently, the window for the Chapia mission closed, and I made a video about that. That is the Mars analog. The deadline was April 2nd, but I found it interesting that the requirements are almost the same for being a real astronaut. And sorry to use the word real, but I would think that the Chapia mission, because you are still on Earth, would be a good opportunity to actually lessen the requirements and take normal people or more average people because we're gonna want more average people on Mars. So why not have, for example, a reporter or an artist or just someone that doesn't have to be a pilot or have a master's in STEM? But I did find it interesting and I wanted to share with you too, if you were to apply for that Chapia mission too, which you would be isolated from friends and family for a year, here are some of the questions that I found interesting on the application. So some of these questions include, are you willing to be in small or confined spaces for extended periods up to one year? Are you willing to participate in an isolation and confinement simulation with three other participants for one year? Are you willing to have no communication outside of your crew without a minimum time delay of 20 minutes for extended periods? Are you willing to go for those same extended periods of time with no or very limited contact with family and friends? So I feel like if you're just married or have a child, I wouldn't want to do this. Are you willing to go for extended periods up to one year with restricted social media contact? That actually might be a good thing for me. Are you willing to perform daily or weekly cognitively and physically demanding tasks? That's what I do every day as a YouTuber, I'm kidding. Are you willing to follow daily prescribed exercise protocols? Absolutely, that one I know I can do. Are you willing to perform maintenance and cleaning tasks? Are you willing to provide blood, urine, stool, and saliva samples once or twice a month? That one is interesting to me as well. You also have to consume processed shelf-stable spaceflight foods for a year with no input into the the menu so if you're picky good luck are you willing to grow and consume salad crops again if you're picky you're not gonna do so well now there is a short section also for general essay and these questions are why do you want to participate in this experience what do you expect the experience to be like if you were in an isolation and confinement simulation for one year how would you handle a family emergency that occurred during that time how did you handle the COVID isolation? What were the issues for you and how did you handle those? I thought that these questions were pretty interesting, also considering that is just for the Chapia mission. That's the one that is actually still here on Earth. And while these would be interesting and I do appreciate everyone sending these to me, I am not qualified. If you are looking at these news headlines that say, it's your time to be an astronaut, it's open to the public, it's not. Hey guys, really quick, I wanna talk about the sponsor of today's video, private internet access. One of the best ways to use a VPN is for watching Netflix. That's because streaming services like Netflix have different library options based on where you're located. And some shows you just won't be able to access unless you're in the right location 
unless of course you're using a VPN. Private internet access will help you to overcome this restriction and you can change your IP address to one of 91 countries and choose from all 50 US states. This will give you access to websites and services without limitations, Plus, having a VPN actually keeps you more secure. Free Wi-Fi, like many of us use at a Starbucks or the airport, is extremely open and vulnerable. You don't want your personal information stolen, so you can avoid this by using private internet access. This will safeguard your internet connection through an encryption tunnel, which will protect you against those looking to exploit private information. Private internet access also has a no-log policy that was proven in court. So what exactly does this mean? Well, they don't store any personal personal data about you, and private internet access is available for all platforms from your phone to your computer. Plus, you can use one subscription to protect unlimited devices. Signing up is risk-free, there's a 30-day money-back guarantee and 24-7 customer support. You can also use the link in the description of this video to get 83% off plus four months for free. So I'm now using it. I'm really glad that I have it. I think the thing that will benefit me the most is I do use free Wi-Fi a lot. So I'm glad that this will help keep my information more secure. And thanks again to Private Internet Access to sponsoring today's video. Now, if you are back to applying for that usajobs.gov job for being an astronaut candidate, here are some of the duties of your position. You're going to conduct operations in space, duh, that's why you wanna go, including on the ISS and development and testing of future spacecraft. You will likely perform extravehicular activities or EVA around spacecraft, space stations, and on planetary surfaces using the robotic remote manipulator system and participate in the development and testing of future extravehicular and robot activities. You're gonna conduct research experiments, including those on animals. So if you're a PETA lover, you're gonna operate as a safe member of an aircraft spacecraft crew, including flight planning and communications and perform spacecraft maintenance activities. You'll conduct ground support tasks for astronaut training spaceflight missions, such as CAPCOM, that is a capsule communicator in the Mission Control Center. Participate in and be evaluated during mission simulations that prepare yourself and other astronauts to work as a well-coordinated team with the flight controllers in the Mission Control Center to conduct operations in the dynamic environment of space. You'll support development and operation of human spaceflight programs or other agency efforts as directed, advocate for the interest and safety of all astronauts, and serve as the public face of NASA, providing appearances across the country internationally and sharing NASA's discoveries and goals. Are you ready? Now, here are your conditions of employment, and this is the part that makes it so that it's open to the public. You have to have a uh, US citizenship. Frequent travel for the job is required. A financial disclosure statement is also required. You must meet all qualification, education, and experience requirements by the closing date of the announcement. And if you're not a test pilot or have a master's in STEM, there are some other options. You can have a medical doctor discipline, a biological and medical science discipline, physical science discipline, that was interesting, or engineering and operations discipline. You will also be subjected to drug testing, a background investigation, fitness testing, medical and psychiatric examinations. So you can't be cray. You're gonna have to pass a swimming test during the first month of training. Long duration missions aboard the ISS can last 12 months or longer, so training for those long duration missions is very arduous and takes approximately two to three years. This training also includes long periods away in other countries and the list goes on and on, but there will be an anticipated high number of applicants through multiple stages in the assessment process. And that is why you can track your application but once you submit that application, you're gonna be probably waiting for one year to figure out if you've actually made it. So I guess keep your plans flexible. But I just thought that this would be an interesting video because number one, I had a lot of people saying that I should do this. Well, guess what, I can't. And number two, it's a pretty strenuous uh, requirements just to get in for an application. And it's not limited to if you want to go to space. It's also if you want to do a Mars analog, which I don't usually raise issue or concern with things, but I do think that they should like extend who is eligible to apply for the Chapia mission. I stand by that. 
And hopefully, I don't know, maybe someone at NASA will see this video and make a change. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. I will be in Japan and LA for the next two weeks. So I just wanted to get out a video for you because I know that if you're subscribed to my channel, you enjoy my content. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you soon.